On Easter Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. And we can choose to look at the resurrection as Jesus coming back from the dead or as Jesus moving forward in life. Jesus' resurrection doesn't undo his crucifixion, but rather it completes it. I think it's an important distinction because our resurrection, our new life, can be found on the other side of crucifixion. We can nail our sins, our pettiness, our egotistical behavior, our hate, and anything else that separates us from God and from each other to the cross. We can only move forward if we are willing to decrease so that Christ can increase. If we are willing to embrace the crosses we bear, Once we understand how God presents us with opportunities and challenges to move forward toward him and toward new life in Christ, are we able to appreciate the ascension and its place in our lives? In the ascension, even though Jesus disappears, we celebrate his presence. He is with us in our minds, in our hearts, and most of all, in spirit. In other words, he is with us at all times and wherever we go. How exactly he is with us is somewhat of a mystery, but we have enough to begin to understand. He is with us in the Eucharist, which the Council of Trent described as the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. St. Paul tells us that the church is also the body of Christ, meaning that wherever the church is present, bringing the love and mercy that Jesus reveals to us on the cross into the darkness of despair and sadness, Jesus is present. The Eucharist and the church provide us with an idea of what the fullness of the resurrection means. The ascension is another aspect of our lives as Catholics. It allows us to know Jesus, not just know him, but to know him intimately. It's not enough to just know Jesus because he offers us so much more than we could ever imagine. And since he wants us to to continue to learn about him, his life is the blueprint we need to follow. It might seem overwhelming to think about all that we have been told and all that we have been read, all that we have read throughout our lives, the life of Jesus and the apostles, 2,000 years of history, the sacraments, the prayers, and everything else that is the beauty of the Catholic Church has their foundation in one word, love. Take a moment and imagine a land where there are no books, no paper. All the stories that the people in this land read can be found on the walls of houses. The greatest fear, of course, was that these houses would burn down. The most visited house of all of them was the house that contained the entire Bible on its walls. One night, a lightning storm caused several of the houses to catch fire, including the Bible house. The first firefighter on the scene entered this house and made his way upstairs to the room where Matthew's gospel was. The man pried off to the paneling that contained verses 37 and 39 of Matthew's gospel. And he escaped from the fire holding only these two verses. When the firefighter was asked why he had chosen those particular verses, he replied, If we have them, we can probably remember all of the stories and rebuild the house. But without these two verses, we would be lost. Every story has to do with these two verses. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The solemnity of the ascension is our chance to tell the world that Jesus is still with us. 
How can we do that, though? We have to get our hands dirty. Jesus wants us to work in his vineyard. What is his vineyard? Simply, it is your house. It is my house. The vineyard is your life and my life. The vineyard is that place where others are reaching out to us, seeking the life of Christ in us. They long for Jesus, and they can find him. They can find him within us. When you reach out to others using the unique and special gifts that God has given only to you, you are shouting without even opening your mouth that Jesus is with us. We were led to Jesus by other people in our lives. Now it's our turn to lead others to him. Once the apostles stopped looking up at the sky after Jesus' ascension, what did they do? They got to work. Whatever we do, we should be motivated by loving others into wholeness. I am reminded of the surrealist painter from Spain, Salvador Dali, who had an extremely close relationship with his mother. After he died, he explained his immense grief by saying, how do you get over the death of someone who made the scars of your soul disappear? St. Paul also addresses the necessity of love, saying, writing, if I speak in the tongues of men or angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I even have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. True discipleship, however, is not a simple reflection of our love for God. It is an act of choice and commitment that we must make to humble ourselves and one another. There was once a monastery that was to receive a new abbot, which is the highest ranking member of the monastic community. When the new abbot arrived at the abbey, the monks judged him inferior to them because he was wearing very humble clothing. In fact, they sent them to their kitchen and he spent weeks scouring pots and preparing their meals. When the bishop arrived one day for a visit, he was surprised to find the new abbot in the kitchen preparing supper for all the monks. Imagine what a lesson in humility was learned when the bishop introduced their new abbot to the newly humbled monks. Many people wear a cross around their neck as an outward sign of their faith. But Jesus asks us to reflect on the following question today. Do I wear my cross or do I bear my cross? In other words, have we fully committed ourselves to living our lives according to what the cross represents. Regardless of what might be preventing us from fulfilling our true, true potential as disciples of Christ, whether it be guilt, a feeling of unworthiness, or perhaps too much pride, Jesus wants us to commit to him and to a life of love. He calls us loudly to true discipleship exactly as we are at this very moment. We are wounded because of the human condition, but we are also the healers, and God needs each and every one of us. The only limitations we have are the ones that we place on ourselves. God's love for us makes us whole because in his eyes, we are perfect. And our love, when grounded in our love for God, can heal those in our lives who think that their crosses are too much to carry. All of us in one way or another are the walking wounded who need to know that sin, death, and despair are never the final words, and they certainly do not define us. Each of us experiences times of darkness when we think that even God has left us. Darkness can come from the loss of a friend or a job or health or one's home. When light begins to dawn, it is usually 
the result of some other person's, another person's kindness and support. When we discover how to use the gifts God has given us, we can become those same messengers of hope. As Christians, hope is our anchor to God. In order to be the light of hope, we must remove all the clutter from our lives and place our hope in God. A person born blind lives in a world of darkness, but if he or she has faith and hope, the darkness gives way to the light. A, por a person born with sight can spend an entire lifetime in darkness if he searches for peace, love, and joy where God is absent. Our purpose on earth is not to get used to the dark, but to shine as lights. And the light shines brightest through love. Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, speaking of love, said, spread your love everywhere you go. First of all, in your home, own home. Give love to your children, to your wife or husband, to a next door neighbor. Let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. Be the living expression of God's kindness. Kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile, kindness in your warm greeting. Love, it's a noun and it's a verb. It's who we are and it's what we do. God created us to love. And when we do, the light of Christ shines brightly and always through us. Just love. Love one another and love yourself. When you love, you will always find God. <laughs>